So, what do you think I'm printing this week? Well, whatever it is, it's pretty big. This has been going for over 21, 22 hours. Good morning everybody, it's Steven here for Bland Designs and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, December the 21st, 2020, the 285th day of COVID and I hope you're all doing well and are looking forward to Christmas. It's going to be different this year as we well know, but at least it's still something to look forward to, isn't it? So let's move right into my current projects and you can see behind me this quilt it is not finished yet it's very weird i think i'm going to call it either weird or loud what this is made up of in that center section that mishmash of stripes and different fabrics that hmm, sort of go together sort of don't go together if you remember last week we had our guild christmas party i'm going to talk more about that later uh, it was virtual and somebody got the idea that each of us on the guild as a christmas present from the guild should get a bag of scraps my guild collects scraps uh, the idea is that you go to a guild meeting when we could physically meet take in your scraps and exchange them for other scraps that you might be be able to use in a current project or whatever well the scrap pile just keeps getting a little bit bigger <laughs> actually i call it the dump pile because i think basically it's these are this is a way for people to get rid of things they don't want and the scraps are in various sizes um, so one of the executive thought we should make Christmas bags fill them with scraps from the collection and deliver them to each member of the guild safely of course um, and on the night of the guild Christmas party we would open them all up well we did and these are the scraps that I got now I thought I should do something with them instead of just throw them in the garbage so i did i cut them all down into two inch strips sewed the strips together used a couple different methods for that made half square triangles did some um, string quilting and those blocks in the center are the ones that i came up with so then i bordered them with white and it's a mishmash um it's this is what they call improv quilting i had absolutely no plan for this and i still don't <laughs> okay I'm just using up some of my own scraps as well so everything in the center of this quilt are the scraps I received the night of the guild Christmas party everything else is from my own scrap pile except for the white the white actually is yardage that I had and I'm using it as my uh, accent I guess um, to separate the different sections so here's where I've what I've gotten so far yes it is loud However, having said that, it's starting to grow on me. It's definitely a scrappy quilt. And I think I'm going to put an, a top border and a bottom border on. My original plan was, and I didn't really have a plan, but after I made all these flying geese on both sides, I thought I'd put flying geese across the top and the bottom. And I may still do that. I'm not sure yet. Or I might just pick up, I still have some more of those batik uh, scrap strips you see in, you know, along the edges over here that kind of thing I might use those in the top and bottom and we'll see where it goes from there um, it's growing and I have to say I kind of enjoy making it because it's really mindless sewing I I don't care <laughs> I just don't care uh, it's that kind of thing but you know when it's done and I will layer it and I will quilt it it can make a a nice little you know throw or maybe it's going to be a little bigger than a throw i think um just something you know while you're watching tv you can cuddle underneath or something like that i don't know so some people might call it an art quilt yeah some people might <laughs> i don't know who they are but anyways that's what i did with my scraps and yeah it's just kind of like a cleansing your palette kind of quilt um, I have more serious quilts in mind to do for the new year and uh, well, right now I just needed a little break from all the Christmas sewing and before I get into the more serious projects. 
Now I still am working on my grandmother's quilt, but I haven't got that far on it yet. Um, so that's why I haven't shown you anything more because really there's nothing more to see than what I showed you the last time I showed it to you. So I'll let you see this when it gets finished as well. And I'll probably talk about it more extensively and the techniques that I'm using in this um, in uh, this week's Idiot Quilter whenever I get around to doing that. It's going to be a busy week. Okay, so I do have some other things to show you as well. So the last of the my art journaling groups Christmas cards and ATCs have come in and they're of course gorgeous. They are one talented group of ladies, I will tell you that for sure. And I enjoy working with them. So I'm just going to show you what came in. Uh, this is from Dana. Lovely card. I don't know if you can see the sparkle on it, but there is sparkle in the letters here. And it's a very intricate die cut. And she just wrote me a personal note inside and she put it on this nice silvery metallic card stock as well. Very lovely, very nice. And uh, she has some of her ATCs here. Some in the back, some in the front. <laughs> They're every which way, but again, very creative. And then we have the card from uh, Caroline. Again, another very intricate die cut. Very cute little reindeer. And her ATCs. Again, these are art. They really are. And Kristen, I don't have any of Kristen's ATCs yet, but that's okay. Um, but again, a really nice card. Kristen gets very much into very intricate dies um, for her cards and they're lovely. And last but not least in my group, this is from Joanne, and she's my steampunk lady. There are two of them in my group, she and Gina, that are both into steampunk, and so I would expect her card to have a steampunk theme, and it does. And I love steampunk as well, so she knows that. And this is the inside. She wrote a message, but another really intricate stamp. And her ATCs. And Joanne's really the person who got the group into doing uh, ATCs because she's a big ATC person. Uh, she loves to make them. She loves to trade them. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of the crafter's world uh, of trading cards with ATCs. So all will go in my Space of Honor, which I mentioned, I think, last week that I do need to do some... Uh, reorganizing of that because it's getting pretty full and uh, but they will go out somewhere for sure okay so that's new things to show you this week um, so new uh, and very interesting YouTube channel this is for those of you that are knitters and for those of you that are cooks and bakers um, and those of you that like nature these couple of guys uh, at first I thought they are Canadian they live in Ontario my province and they don't live all that far from me I found out I thought they were way up north because well if you go on to their YouTube channel you will see their beautiful log cabin and the acreage that it's on and right now it's covered in snow and there's a forest and it looks very very you know Christmas card worthy and uh, so I thought they were way up north well no they're east of us by mm, an hour and a half maybe in a place called Sterling and one of these guys dyes his own wool and he shows you the process that he goes through um, I think he's in the process of setting up a business um, his his wool is lovely I mean the more I see of these knitting channels the more I want to become a knitter um, just because the wool is so beautiful this is not your fin fintex from uh, like, I was going to say Woco, but you won't know what Woco is probably. That was a Canadian chain. It was sort of the precursor to uh, stores like Walmart. But uh, it was a polyester blend. Everybody was making slippers out of it at one time back in the 70s. Um, but now, like quilting fabric, the wool industry has come so far ahead. And they're just beautiful, the colors. And this uh, man, he 
dyes his own too and they're beautiful as well. Uh, his partner though um, also does some cooking. Well he does some too and so their um, YouTube channel which I think they only put up uh, one a month maybe. Maybe it's a little more frequent than that. Uh, they're relatively long you know one and a half to two hours in length but it's like watching a program on TV where there are certain segments. Um, yes, they talk about knitting, but they also talk about various stores that supply things for them for their, for, for their hobby. They talk about cooking, they talk about decorating. It's got a little bit of everything in it for pretty much everybody, I think. So I think you'll really kind of enjoy it. So check out my review here. This week's YouTube channel is called Cabin Boy Knits. And as the name implies, this is about knitting. But it's a little bit more than just about knitting. It's more about dyeing yarn or dyeing wool. And this gentleman, these two gentlemen actually are Canadian. I think they live in Northern Ontario. I'm not absolutely sure about that, but that's what I gather from watching some of their videos. Uh, they do live in a cabin and they have it all set up for dyeing wool. And one of the interesting things is they dye a lot of their wool using natural products that they forage from the forest. So I find this fascinating because I'm not interested in knitting per se, but I am interested in the dyeing process and I imagine some of this process can be applied to fabric as well. But if you want something a little different, and oh yes, one of them tends to be naked quite a bit in his videos and I don't know why. Just saying. So if you want something interesting, something uh, that takes you, you know, outside of the box of just doing fabric and wool um, creations, then check out Cabin Boy Knits. So the link to Cabin Boy Knits is in the show notes. Uh, there is a link to the Idiot Quilter I put up last week and I talk on that amongst other things about how to get over your creative block or sometimes we slip into a, um, a dead zone. You know, we lose our mojo uh, kind of a thing. Uh, we just don't feel like doing our hobby for a while and you want to know something that's okay because I think that's really our brain and our body telling us it's time to take a break and rejuvenate but how do you get that back well I have some suggestions in that that pertain a lot to quilting but I think they would pertain to also any other hobby that you might be interested in so that's in episode 93 of the idiot quilter and the link is in the show notes below there's also the link, of course, to this week's book that we'll come to in a few moments. And there is a link to the Stephen and Walter Live. Of course, this past week, yesterday, which was Sunday, when we usually do our, our YouTube Live, we did a Zoom Live, as I had advertised in advance. Now, we didn't have a lot of people. That's okay. Everybody's busy this time of the year. Maybe Zoom is just not some people's thing. Um, but the people that were there, um, they've sent me some notes, uh, some of them, and they really enjoyed what we did. And I recorded it, and it's up uh, for this week's Stephen and Walter Live, and the link is below. We had some games, and uh, we talked about Christmas tra tra traditions in our families, things that are in our memory that come along with the Christmas season. And we also talked a little bit about how we were going to handle Christmas this year as well. So it was just a nice gathering. We had some snacks, we had some drinks. So if you're interested, you might like this in the background while you're working on something else or whatever. Um, make it feel like a party of your own, I guess. So the link is below. Okay, so that's taking me to what's pissing me off this week. Okay, tis the season to get the annual Christmas letter, or in modern day, it's probably the Christmas email. You know, those are the letters that people send up to send out to everybody to tell you what's been going on in their life in the last year. I hate them. I absolutely hate Christmas letters. Now, on the positive side, it is good to hear from some people you haven't heard from in a while. I do appreciate that. And in fact, I got a letter this past week from a friend from my childhood and we have remained friends for all these years. So for 60 years, basically, they have been friends. We don't get together very often because they live someplace else. And 
For other circumstances, we don't see each other on a regular basis. But when we do, it's almost like no time has passed. And I appreciate that. And I really appreciate it, this email, this Christmas letter. And there are several reasons why I appreciate it, this letter. One, I'll show it to you. I'm not going to read it because it's personal. But, you know, even in the email, did it all out in a um, you know a nice little graphic which is nice um, but in that it was what I liked about it was it was short it was to the point it told me the important things I should know about what's been happening uh, with their family and I really appreciated that and it's just a nice letter and that's great that's the kind of Christmas letter I enjoy but that's not what most of them are like most of them do nothing but brag about what they've been doing in the last year. Okay, fine. There is a fine line between, you know, stating what happened and bragging about it. And you can slip over that line. But the ones that go on for days and days about each one of their grown-up children or whatever. You know, Johnny just graduated with his PhD in nuclear... Uh, in nuclear biology. Um, he is now hoping to get an intern residence at such and such institute um, where he'll make hundreds of thousands of dollars in a year. His lovely wife Lucretia is on the runway again in Milan um, being safe though of course because COVID has put a real uh, crimp into her plans as being a superstar model. Their two little children, our grandchildren, are gorgeous, brilliant, blah 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 we went on many trips this year to exotic places well that might have been from a year before then uh when they could um it's just been so hard this covid on us this year because you know we're working from home uh kyle my husband uh the ceo of blah 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 incorporated um has you know it's just been worked to the bone he puts in a good hour and a half a day on the computer and his poor assistant just came down with covid so he's had to get temporary help um, all day long I've been watching catching up on my reading and on my shows uh, while drinking fabulous bottles of champagne and wine and eating the bonbons I hope you too are having a wonderful Christmas it's good to be rich and fa and famous and intelligent and whatever yeah you, you get the point right these letters go on for days and I just gag on them all the time. Um, actually, I like to do dramatic readings of these kinds of letters to Walter, um, which at least brings us some amusement. Okay, you're going to say, well, aren't you a nasty so-and-so? Here, this person has taken time to write to you and tell you what's going on. No! What they did was mass produce one letter that talks all about them as if I give a, you know. Now, like I said, I do enjoy hearing what's been going on in some people's lives that I have not been able to keep up with in the past year. I guess it's all about moderation, isn't it? I would never send out a Christmas letter, ever. I don't want to be one of those kind of people okay um if you're one of those kind of people you probably hate what i just said i'm sorry <laughs> if you do it's just the way i feel so don't send me a christmas letter okay just just as well that you don't send me a christmas letter because i might be tempted to give it a dramatic reading um that would be fun to do that read on no 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 i would never do that i wouldn't do that no but i guess what i'm saying what pisses me off is how some people really think that other people think they're that important that they're going to hang on to every word that you have written in this letter about them i think a good christmas letter is one that is short to the point gives you the highlights of the person's year gives you a little bit of background on what members of the family have been doing and wishes you a Merry Christmas. The end. 
it doesn't need to be 12 typed pages long. And yes, I have gotten letters like that. I have. That's a whole evening of dramatic readings. It really is for something like that. So anyways, it's just, it's not so much I'm pissed off at it. It's more of an annoyance, I guess. It is what it is. Okay, moving on. Um, what's new? Well, um, I did buy some fabrics, which I have forgotten to bring out and show you. So give me a second. Okay, so I've got my fabrics here. Now, these weren't in my plan to buy, but fabric is never in my plan. I see it, I like it, I have to have it. So, my local quilt store, we went in to pick up a couple of things. We made the appointment, we wore our masks, we do everything that you're supposed to do for that kind of thing. Which, as an aside, it's probably the last time we're going to actually physically get, be able to get into the quilt shop because I think on Christmas Eve, rumor has it that my area is going to be locked right down so and i don't have a problem with that because i think we need to do that but anyways i can still she's got an online store now which is great so i can still order and do curbside pickup or have it mailed out i'd probably just do curbside pickup because it's in the same town i live in it would probably take longer to get it if i ha have it mailed because of the way our mail system works these days but anyways went in to get a few other little things and saw this isn't that beautiful and i also saw this equally beautiful both of these fabrics are by tim holtz yes tim holtz makes fabric actually tim holtz has been making fabric for quite a while it has a signature grunge look and i have other tim holtz fabric as well that i've actually made one quilt out of it it was a quilt, I don't know if you remember, that I was kind of commissioned to by a friend to make. And so I did make that some time ago. Um, but I really like these ones because these are using some really bright colors. Now, I also picked, this is not Tim Holtz, this is somebody else, but I picked this up because I thought it would go with these two very well. What am I going to do with these? No idea. I have two meters of all three of these fabrics. So I think I'm going to um, look through my pattern collection and find something that I feel these would work very well with. Also the reason I'm showing you these fabrics uh, is because they are by Tim Holtz and everybody loves Tim Holtz crafting products. I know I do. I have so much of his stuff it isn't funny. I've actually stopped buying it. Uh, partly to the fact that I have everything. Um, but also because you know I, I'm leaning towards other areas now in my creative journey here so those aren't really on the top of my list anymore. However if you are a crafter you might want to look into getting some of this fabric to put into your own uh, projects because this fabric would make great backgrounds for mixed media pieces for on a canvas background, uh, make great covers for art journals or for, you know, scrapbooks or, you know, whatever you're making. Incorporate some fabric into your um, crafting. And because it's Tim Holtz, it's got that distressed look to it already, I am sure it's going to fit into whatever you are crafting as well. So, you know, it just opens up another avenue in your mixed media uh, toolbox. So, yeah, but they're pretty, very pretty. I love them. So, that's about all that's new. But speaking of Tim Holtz, I was going through my stash again. And many years ago, Tim Holtz came out with a series of books about basically using his products and how to use them. And this one, Tim Holtz Distressables number two, I probably have number one and I think there were three in the series. So I think I have all three of them somewhere, but this is one that I found and uh, it's very, very nice. Yes, it is selling Tim Holtz products in a sense, but it's showing you how to use them in very creative ways. Um, it's a very nice book to look through too. And as I said earlier, if you're really into Tim Holtz, this is probably something, this series is probably something you want in your collection. 
um, just for inspiration alone, because I always find Tim Holtz very inspiring. Um, what's he say on the cover? It says, Tim's next chapter of the creative journey. Learn new ways to alter your jewelry, scrapbook pages, cards, and more with innovative techniques and projects. And he, uh, tools to use, he talks about distress and alcohol ink, ink applicators, paper distressor and scissors, distress embossing powder, needle tool and paper creaser, sanding block, punches, adhesives. And uh, he's got a section on the basics on how to use these products. And then he shows you how to make things like I just this one right here. This is cute. Mini stitched uh, file folder booklets. That's something I think I'd like to do. Okay. So I'm going to keep this book out because there are projects in here that maybe I will explore further. So can you still get this book? Yes, you can. I don't know if you can get it on the Rangers uh, Inc. site. Um, they're not actually the publisher of it. It's published by D Originals. But I did look it up on Amazon and it is available on Amazon. I paid $17.99 Canadian according to the back of the book for this when I purchased it. On Amazon right now though, it's double the price, of course, because I have a feeling this book is no longer in print. And on Amazon.ca, it's listed as $34.70 plus $4.95 shipping. So this $18 book that I paid $18 for is now um almost forty dollars yeah am i going to say to you is it worth it for forty dollars no i'm going to be honest i wouldn't pay forty dollars for this book it's a nice book but it's not a forty dollar book um even at 17.99 a little bit pushing it however you may find it in the used book section of amazon for a lot less you may pick it up in a craft store for a lot less than that too if there's any left around so anyways i mention it because it's tim and i'm sort of on a tim theme here today okay so that takes us to something new i'm going to start i don't know how how frequent this is going to be whether i will do it every week or not this is where i might lose you okay but of course you know i have a new toy my 3D printer, and I am all about 3D printing right now uh, because it is a new toy. I am trying to figure out a way to combine 3D printing with quilting and with mixed media. I have some ideas actually, but I'm not going to st start speaking about those right now because they are half-baked in my head. So mm, as they cook, me, I'll, sh I'll sh and I do a few things. I'll be able to talk about that in a little bit more detail. But in the meantime, I'm starting this new segment called 3D Corner, and where I'm going to talk basically not a lot, but a little bit about my experience with my 3D printer and what I'm planning. So let's get right into it. I bought more filament. Of course, I bought more filament. Okay, filament's becoming my new fabric and scrapbook paper obsession. Well, not really because the colors are limited in filament. But I just discovered, and it's supposed to come today, that there is something called transparent filament. And I'm thinking, ooh, there are quilting templates that you can print. And they would be, in, at least my theory is, those would be best printed in something that's transparent so you can see through it. Now, how transparent it is, I don't know. Um, I don't think it's going to be like looking through a glass window. Okay. But I ordered some of it. It's supposed to come today and I'm going to give it a try. I also got some more colors. I'm trying to get each color in the rainbow kind of, of a thing. I now have red, orange, and yellow that I just bought. I do have blue, I do have green, I do have a gold, I do have a copper, but those are the metallics, those two, and I've been having trouble with those. I'm still experimenting with those. They're, they're a different consistency, they seem to be, than the regular filament in the other colors. Um, I have white and black, of course. I don't have purple, but I'm not even sure if you can get purple. I think you probably can. 
I bought some more of the rainbow that I think I mentioned last week that I had problems with. Well, I bought another uh, rainbow and it worked a little better, but it may have been because the size of the print that I was doing was much bigger. So the intervals between color changes happened a little bit more frequently on the object. I don't know, but this is what I made. This is a flower pot. Now during COVID, I have been taking snippets from my big philodendron I have upstairs in my kitchen area. We've had it for years. It used to belong to Walter's sister at one point in time. And the thing thrives. It's about the only plant I can actually you know, keep without killing, mainly because they don't need a lot of water. But I thought what would be nice for my mother's room before COVID started is if I, well, when COVID started, I thought I'd take a few snippings, root them and that bit, that kind of thing. And then when we were able, thinking that it was only going to be a month or two, <laughs> not so lucky, um, take them over to decorate her room, especially when she moved into the private room, which I have not seen yet because she moved into the private room just at the start of COVID. And so we, she's been in lockdown ever since. So anyways, I have now started three plants. One of them is very, very healthy. And the other ones have got lots of roots, but they're sitting in like cups. So I thought it might be kind of neat to make a unique flower pot. Saw this design, thought I'd give it a go. And I thought I'd try the rainbow on it. So, you know, it doesn't have all the colors, but I think it's quite pretty. And it's very shiny as well. Is it watertight? Yes, it is. I filled it up with water to see if it would leak and it didn't leak. So that's a good thing. Did it take long to print? Yes, it did. 15 hours. <laughs> can I make it smaller? Can I make it bigger? Yes, I can. <laughs> In fact, the original for this was about, uh, I blew it up 300% to make it this size. And I could probably go another, maybe up to 500% of the original size. It'll fit on my bed if I want to make a bigger one. Of course, that means it'll probably take a day and a half to print at that point. Things are not fast in 3D printing, but I was really pleased with this. The other thing is that I made was this. This is a desk organizer. Now this part's actually supposed to be for your cell phone, but this sits next to my 3D printer because I'm always using sticky notes and things like that. So I just have a pad of sticky notes sitting up here. It's got a nice pen holder and they're a little they're a little bigger than the average pen, so you can get something a little thicker in it, like a marker. There's a place for note paper right here, and there is a, the risk of tipping everything out, there's a little place to put paper clips or whatever you want in there as well. So I thought this was really cool. Um, why is it green, you may ask? Because that was the filament I had in the machine at the time. Um, thing is, you know, if you don't like the color, that these things are printed out in, you can paint them. They're just, acryl just acrylic paint. People do it all the time, especially on the figurines. So, and I'm pretty sure just the average acrylic paint that you have laying around the house from your mixed media supplies uh, will work on it. I have yet to try to paint anything. Uh, I don't like painting, that's why. But I thought this was really handy and uh, it's working out dandy. Now, did this take a long time to print? Yes. This one took about 20 hours. I think to print, like I said, you don't go into mass production with these kind of 3D printers. They are meant to make, you know, well, you can make as many as you want, but how much time have you got? So, so I did that. Um, now I do have something else. I can't show it to you because it's mounted on the machine and I'd have to move the camera over, but I'm probably going to uh, do a little bit of a video insert for next week about this device, if it works. And what it basically is, someone created a 3D print model that will hold three Sharpies. And as your filament, your plastic, goes through the center of this thing, you have these Sharpies sitting in it, and the points of the Sharpies will touch your filament as it runs through it and color it. Now, the person who created this was showing how it works. You're not going to get brilliant, intense colors, but you'll get colors mm, probably a little duller than these ones in it. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a try and see what kind of effect I can get out of it. He, it almost gave 
what he had created a marble like look to it. So I printed this out. We've mounted it on the uh, 3D printer and uh, later today I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. I mean it may not amount to anything but I'm experimenting, I'm learning, that's why I'm doing it. Um, what else? Uh, I bought some equipment for it. I replaced there's something called a Bowden tube. A Bowden tube is basically a piece of Teflon tubing that you thread the filament through and um, it's really the system for drawing the, the, the filament through the machine um, to create whatever you're creating. Well, I was having trouble with that and found out by doing some research that the, the Bowden tube that comes with most 3D printers is not the best, but there's one called a Capri that uh, everybody recommends. It's got really great ratings and it's supposed to be excellent. So I bought that, I installed it, and yes, it is much better. Also, it came, the kit that I bought came with some couplings. You need couplings to hold the tube in place in a couple of areas. And the ones that come with your machine have an, these little clampy teeth on the inside and they're made of plastic. Well, this thing uses heat. So, you know, they expand, they contract, and they let go and you don't want them to let go. So the new couplings I have are all metal on the inside and they're supposed to grip this Bowden tube much better and they do. So I replaced those with that. These upgrades are not expensive, um, I'm finding. Now there's some other upgrades that I'm looking into that I'm thinking of buying uh, as well but I'm not going to mention those today uh, because they'll mean nothing to you unless you have a 3D printer and probably if you have a 3d printer you know a lot more than i do <laughs> about it so you're not even watching this but uh yeah there's lots of mods as they call them that you can do to these things to give you better final products okay so that's all i'm going to say today about my 3d printer and as i said this might become a regular segment on here it might not we'll see if you're really bored with me talking about a 3d printer sorry fast forward okay Moving on to events of the past week. Okay, update on my mother, she's fine. I had made arrangements to go over to deliver her Christmas presents and to swap out her quilt. I think I mentioned that last week. Okay, I'm talking to my mother last Tuesday, so the day after last week's vlog came out. I mentioned to my mother, well I didn't mention, I phoned her purposely, well I always phone her every week, but I phoned her purposely to tell her that, okay, mom, I'm coming over on later in the week and I'm going to swap out your quilt. Now, I can't go in and see her and she understands that and knows that because it's all locked down, but I didn't want her to think someone was stealing her quilt off her bed, um, that I was bringing her a nice, fresh, clean one. Now, these quilts were made by my grandmother, her mother, and um, I thought they had a lot of sentimental value to my mother. <laughs> I thought, I'll come to that in a minute. So I went over there, delivered the gifts. The one of the staff came out, took the gifts, and I said, um, I'm supposed to pick up my mother's quilt as well, and this is the one to replace it. And she gave me this deer in headlights like she didn't know anything about it. This did not surprise me. This is not a criticism of the staff at the residence, okay? They're extremely busy. I wouldn't want their job. So it's easy that down the, I had talked to the administrator via email, it's possible the message did not get relayed to the person who was the, the one immediate to the situation at that time. So she said, okay, just give me a second. She went up to my mother's room. Five minutes later, she came back down. She hands me a bed runner. I had forgotten I'd made my mother a bed runner for her bed some time ago. And of course, obviously the staff person was not uh, a quilter. So to her, that was a quilt. And, uh, and it is, it's a bed runner, but it wasn't what I was looking for. And I explained that to her. And she says, okay, just give me a second. I could see the gears working because my mother had told me when I talked to her on the phone earlier, oh, I haven't seen my quilt. I think they took it to be washed, but I haven't seen it in a long time. What? First of all, I had given instructions many times over not to wash those quilts that I would look after them. Because my idea was back before COVID that, you know, I went to visit, physically visit my mother every week, you know, so every 
four to six weeks on one of those visits, I would bring a new quilt in and take the other one home and wash it and, and all that kind of stuff. Because although these quilts have been around for a long time, like 50, 60 years, they were all hand done by my grandmother um, and they were meant to be used and they were meant to be washed and they were. And they have stood up to that. I just don't want to stick them in a, an industrial washing machine because that's what they use in the nursing home. And you know, they boil everything. So no, I didn't want to take the chance because in a sense, they are heirlooms. Well, I wasn't too happy when my mother told me this, but at the same time, I didn't know if my mother had it right because my mother's told me things before that aren't true. So I checked it out with the administrator, sent her an email and said, okay, my mother said this. And she says, I will go up and take a look. So about half an hour later, I got an email back. She says, yeah, it's there, it's on her bed. And I said, thanks so much for that. You know, I hate it to bug her because she's got bigger things to worry about right now, doesn't she, than some old quilt. So when I got the deer and headlight looks and she went back in to find it, she came back down about 10 minutes later, very apologetic. She says, it's not on her bed, but I've got people looking. I said, okay. So what the administrator saw when she went in to check for me was the bed runner and she's not a quilter. So yes, that was a quilt, right? So I'm not finding fault with them. Okay. Um, it's just a little bit of a mix up. Well, I wasn't happy though, because those quilts mean a lot in the sense that, you know, I, I thought my mother would appreciate having something familiar in the nursing home for her when she first went in there. And that's why she had used those quilts on her own bed when she was living, you know, in the house and in the apartment. So, you know, I really felt that she would probably appreciate having something like that. And they encourage you at the nursing home to bring in personal items and things like that to, you know, make their room more home-like because it is their home. And now that my mother's in a private room, even more so, the room is much more her room. She's not sharing it with anybody. So I was a little upset by this, but I wasn't going to take out my annoyance with the staff because they've been so good and have done so much for my mother. You know, it's just not right. It's just a quilt, okay? Well, to date, I don't know where the quilt is. Nobody else does either. The administrator said, I'm so sorry to hear that about the quilt. She says, I'm on it. And then she wrote me another email and said, can you describe it for me? Well, no, I can't. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what that particular quilt looked like. I never took a picture of it. Note to self, from now on, take pictures of anything that goes into my mother's room. So I know if it's gone missing, especially right now when I can't check because I can't be there. Um, I said it had blue in it. That's all I could remember. We, Walter and I, we scoured through our pictures and that, see if we had a picture of it anywhere, you know, in the background or something and other pictures we taken. No, of course we did not. And that was the last I heard from the administrator. Now, okay, she's in the process of getting everybody tested because there was a suspicious uh, case there where they thought someone might have contracted COVID. Okay, more important, yes, much more important than a stupid old quilt. So I'm just gonna leave it for a while and see what happens. I don't wanna bother the staff. And you know, my mother's not that upset about it. She's got another quilt on her bed um, that one I would be even more upset about though, because it's a tree of life quilt. It's applique and it's all hand stitched and that by my grandmother and it's a beautiful quilt. And my mother loves it. And that's why it's there. I'm sure you're probably saying, then why bother? I'm a quilter. I could just make her what we call a charity quilt, but she's my mother. I could give her one of my quilts to put on her bed, but I don't want it to go missing either, quite frankly. So my mother doesn't seem to have any um, uh, sentimental or emotional attachment to it. I thought she did. Didn't seem to bother her that the quilt's not there. Oh, well. So it's only me that's upset. So get over it. It's just a quilt. Okay. Um, and I know how that sounds. I'm a quilter. It's not just a quilt. But what I'm saying is, there are bigger 
things to worry about right now than where the quilt is. And I imagine the quilt has probably been put on somebody else's bed by accident. And you know, if they're getting use out of it, if it's bringing some comfort to them, then that's okay. That's okay. We have other quilts. Okay, so that's my mother. She's fine. Uh, we had the Guild virtual Christmas party. I've already talked a little bit about that because we got those scraps and things like that. It was fun. It was fun. We played some games. Um, the games went on a little too long, uh, but that was all right. Um, what, what else did we have to do? And everybody had a little Christmas cheer in their hand too. I had a glass of wine. I kept myself to one because it was a Monday night. And as it is now, I drink way too much. Um, but I try to limit my quant my drinking to, you know, the weekend. Um, now, I'm not an alcoholic, I don't think. But everybody drinks is drinking a little bit more these days, aren't we? But uh, what I'm more concerned about is the calories I'm taking in on all of this. And, oh yeah, I've got the COVID-19 uh, poundage. I am sure of that. I will not get on a set of scales because I'm pretty sure I'm topping out at 200. That'll be the heaviest I've ever been in my life. And, uh... Yeah, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun the Christmas party, and then of course uh, we had the uh, Stephen and Walter live Zoom Christmas party, which I've already mentioned, and you can see what that went on with that, and that was fun. I mean, we only had a handful of people, and but you know, it wasn't quantity; it's quality and it was really nice to see those people face to face and talk with them and yeah i'm hoping the next time we do a zoom live uh that we have a few more but i don't know when the next one will be it won't be for a while uh probably but it was fun at least walter and i had a kick um what else okay so there has been some cooking going on and what did wally cook this week well he made chicken pot pie. Watch this. Okay, so this week on Wally Cooks, he's got some chicken thighs. Legs. Legs, oh, they don't look that appetizing. Um, he just cooked those in the Instapot. And he has all of this mushrooms and peas and what else is in there? Just mixed frozen vegetables. Mixed frozen vegetables. So this combo and you've got some Butter puff pastry, it says. So this is going to become what? Chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie. So Wally is cooking chicken pot pie using his Instapot, which is one of his favorite cooking devices. Mm -hmm. And so what makes this exciting? Nothing. I just thought I'd use up some chicken to oh. make uh, something with vegetables in it. Which with vegetables, yes. Don't seem to eat a lot of vegetables these days. Well, the hardest part about a vegetable is digesting the chair. So here's the final result of Walter's chicken pot pie, which I forgot to take a picture of it before we started eating it. Couldn't wait to get into it, but it's very delicious. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, of course. Of I course made you made it. <laughs> you always say that. Well, anyways, it is quite delicious. Oh, if you're wondering, I put A1 sauce on top of mine. Don't judge me. And it was delicious. And, well, it wasn't very hard to make because I didn't make it, so it was easy for me. Um, but you can see he was using the Instapot for that. And, yeah, it was good. It was good. Okay, so what's coming up? Well, besides the obvious, Christmas Day and... I hope everybody has a safe Christmas day. We are about, as I said, to go into the gray zone that we have this color scheme here in my province and gray is the most restricted. That's the lockdown. And as I said, rightly so. People have not been paying attention. Blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Um, if you're one of those people that's insisting upon getting together with other people on Christmas Day that you should not be getting together with, but you have rationalized it all. Oh yes, we're wearing our masks. Yes, we're all in the bubble. The bubble doesn't exist. That's a myth. 
Okay. Oh yeah, well, and I've heard all kinds of rationalizations. So be it. I can't change your mind. Don't come crying to me when you get COVID. Just saying. Anyways, don't want to end on that kind of note. What's coming up? Something important to Walter and myself. Today is December the 21st, 2020. Today is our 37th anniversary. No, it is not a wedding anniversary for obvious reasons. It was not legal for us to get married until 2004 in Canada. We got married in 2005. We've been married for 15 years. That anniversary is not an important anniversary to us. The important anniversary is the one we're celebrating today. It's the anniversary of how many years we've been together when we first met. I know that a lot of straight couples have these kind of anniversaries about when they first met. What, they, what straight people don't understand is it's a totally different thing in the gay world and why it's so significant. Because we couldn't. When we met, there was no, no thought of ever getting married. Thought never even entered our heads because we knew we couldn't. And when it did become legal, we still were on the fence about whether we should bother. I mean, at that point, we'd been together for 22 years. So, you know, basically in the eyes of the law, of common law in our country, we are married. There's a couple of things though that we discovered that weren't covered by that, that married people get. And so that was one reason why we did get married. But that's still not important. Really our wedding anniversary is the anniversary of when we became legal. Legal spouses, I suppose. This one is when we met. And what you may or may not know about uh, gay relationships is gay relationships do not necessarily last this long. Now I do know some gay relationships that are very very long term. Um, but the joke used to be oh you, you've been together for two weeks? Well that's that's a long time <laughs> or two months okay so 37 years and you know just like any couple in that case We've had our ups, we've had our downs, but we've always come out on top. And then there's a pun in there somehow, but I'm not going to go near it. Um, yeah, so 37 years together. To find somebody that would put up with me for 37 years, that in itself is a miracle. Now, he's no angel. He appears as an angel on here, but he's no angel. Okay, so, you know, it works both ways. You know what I mean if you've been in a long-term relationship. So, how are we celebrating it? We're not. <laughs> well, not tonight. We are going to celebrate it. Uh, what we usually do on our anniversary is, well, in the old days, we used to go out for dinner. Um, or sometimes we'd stay in for dinner and have a special dinner. Well, now we have to stay in and so we are going to have a special dinner. We're going to do surf and turf. And that means that Walter is going to get out his sous vide and do beef tenderloin filet mignon. And we bought some lobster tails. Uh, on some years we've actually had whole lobsters, but the price of a whole lobster right now for a little tiny thing is like astronomical. Um, so they had lobster tails on sale at one of the grocery stores we go to. Um, so we picked up four of them. They're not huge. You know, what do you call them? Two bite lobster tail? <laughs> Maybe kind of a thing. So, and even that was pricey uh, as well. But, you know, a special occasion. And we've got some champagne and we're going to do up some fancy vegetables and stuff like that. And it'll be an evening for us. But that's going to be tomorrow night. Because tonight, Walter has his last class online with the latest sewing projects he's doing, the hoodie that he's making. So we're not doing it tonight. He's got to finish the class. And does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter uh, on that. Um, do we give gifts? No. Do we give cards? No. We just actually just have a nice dinner. Yeah, that's it. Just the two of us. So anyways, that's what's coming up. And yeah, 
can't think of much else. Oh yeah, there may be on Christmas Day. Um, I belong to a group on Facebook called the May, uh, Canadian Male Quilters. And the guy who organizes that is talking about doing a uh, sewing retreat on Christmas Day because he said, you know, there's a lot of us that might be uh, single or alone because of COVID and that kind of thing. And, you know, it would just make Christmas maybe a little bit more special during this difficult time. And I said, yeah, I'm game because what are Walter and I going to do on Christmas Day? Sit around and stare at each other? I mean, the highlight of the day is going to be the Queen's message on TV. Yes, I am Canadian and we have a queen, okay? Um, so, yeah, I, I said, yeah, I'd be game for that. Now, I haven't heard any more about it, so I don't know if it's on or it's off. But regardless, I'll probably end up doing some sewing that day anyways. Um, so, or sitting in front of the TV watching some old Christmas movies or something like that. Um, Christmas Day is, you know, not going to be all that thrilling this year. But Christmas Day isn't. This year is not that much different from any other year. Usually we'd have his, probably his sister's family over, um, possibly my sister and her family over, or we might go over to their place. But, you know, regardless, Walter and I are with ourselves for most of Christmas Day anyways. We don't, we're not giving each other gifts this year, um, mainly because there isn't anything we need or want. It's more difficult to do your shopping. I mean, you have to do it all online and everything comes via Amazon. So, you know, big surprise there. <laughs> you know, I'd probably open the damn thing up and go, oops, this was ordered by Walter and it's supposed to be a surprise for me. Um, so, no, we just decided we're not going to bother with that. Yeah, it seems a little strange not having gifts, but we've done that before too. So, and it does feel a little strange, but nevertheless, it's a strange time. Okay, so I just want to say as my final notes for today is I hope you have a really great Christmas given the circumstances we're in but I don't think on that day we should dwell upon how Christmas is different this year. I hope you have a safe Christmas and I think you know what I mean by that and try to avoid the rationalization okay because next year we want to have a really good Christmas COVID free. That would be my wish for this year and for next year is that we have this time next year, a great Christmas without the threat of COVID. So have a really good Christmas and Stephen Walter live will be on this coming Sunday. It'll be a regular YouTube one uh, this week. And we'll go from there. So have a good one. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay in. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.